and Dan Reinker. Welcome to the third installment of this AVS residency with my colleagues and I from the Nashville Symphony Viola section. You may have heard Nashville referred to as Music City. The Music City nickname actually may have been coined by Queen Victoria over a century ago after she heard a performance of our own Fisk Jubilee Singers in 1873. And I'll tell you more about the Fisk Jubilee Singers later on. The Music City nickname remains today largely because of the country music and recording industries, as well as the many live music venues around town. In order to give you an idea of Nashville's rich musical life and history, I'm going to take you on a brief violist tour of notable places in Music City. We're starting the tour right here in front of the Skirmerhorn Symphony Center, where my colleagues and I perform. The hall was opened in 2006 and is a beautiful example of new classical architecture. The interior concert hall where we play has wonderful acoustics and is surrounded by a two inch gap of air which insulates it from outside noise. A big plus in downtown Nashville, in downtown Nashville where uh, there always is a lot of partying as you'll hear later on. Right across the street from the Skirmerhorn is the Country Music Hall of Fame, which you see behind me. The Hall of Fame's mission is to, quote, collect, preserve, and interpret the evolving history and traditions of country music. It opened in 2001 and now encompasses 350,000 square feet of galleries, archival storage, retail stores, and event space. I've always been impressed with how the designers incorporated musical symbols into the architecture. As you can see, the windows to my, lift, to my left are in the shape of piano keys. Over to my right, the disc-shaped tiers on top of the rotunda represent the evolution of recording media, the 78, the vinyl LP, the 45, and the compact disc. And below the roof, the vertical stone bars and the musical staff portray the notes of the iconic country song, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? I'm already exhausted and hungry, so let's stop at the Goo Goo store on the way to our next destination. This is the current headquarters of the Goo Goo Cluster, and it's just a block from the Skirmerhorn. The Goo Goo Cluster is a popular candy, candy bar here and was invented in Nashville in 1912. It was America's first combination candy bar. Maybe I'll down a bunch of these so I can sprint up to our next musical destination. A few blocks from the Skirmerhorn and the Country Music Hall of Fame, is the National Museum of African American Music. This is our newest musical jewel and just opened in January of this year. It's the only museum dedicated in the words of its founders to preserving and celebrating the many genres created, influenced, and inspired by African Americans. The museum uses historical instruments, stage costumes, sheet music, recording equipment, photographs, and state-of-the-art technology to share perspectives on African-American music and history. Some of the interesting galleries are the African-American religious experience from the early 1600s to the present, 
the Harlem Renaissance and the emergence of jazz, urban renewal, 1970s to the present, the evolution of African American music traditions, the Great Migration and the emergence of blues in the early 1900s, and the Civil Rights Movement, 1940s to the present. Directly across the street from the Museum of African American Music is the Ryman Auditorium. The Ryman is considered to be the mother church of country music and is a national historic landmark. It was built in 1892 and originally intended as a tabernacle. Eventually, it served as the home of the Grand Ole Opry from 1943 to 1974. And it still offers a wide variety of, of entertainment and is open for tours. On a personal note, I've played in the Ryman a few times over the years, including a Messiah and a concert with Dave Brubeck. But the highlight was playing at a, a Habitat for Humanity meeting two years ago, which featured Rosalind and Jimmy Carter. I'm still thrilled that I actually was on the same stage with them. Right near the Skirmer Horn, the Museum of African American Music, and the Ryman is the Broadway Historic District, or as we call it, Lower Broadway. This is a popular destination for country music fans because of its many honky-tonk bars, which feature free live country music from 10 a.m. to 3 a.m. every day. I'm here a little after 11.30 on Saturday morning and you may be able to hear that there already are many bands playing. A number of musicians, including Willie Nelson, Chris Christofferson, and Gretchen Wilson began their careers here. Behind me you can see the Ernest Tubb Record Shop, which was the site of the second longest running radio show in history. The show Midnight Jamboree still is broadcast on Nashville's WSM radio station. I'm standing across from the historic Studio A on Music Row. Music Row is the heart of the business side of Nashville's music industry. Many of my colleagues do recording sessions here and in other studios around town. Take a look at Claire Yang's wonderful video from earlier in this residency in which she talks about working as a recording violist and she takes you inside of Ocean Way Studios right here on Music Row. Just north of downtown is Jefferson Street. During the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, the live music venues on Jefferson were a center of rock and roll and rhythm and blues. Artists like Aretha Franklin, Etta James, Ray Charles, and Little Richard performed in a variety of clubs along Jefferson. Jimi Hendrix had a residency at one of the clubs and considered Nashville to be the place where he honed his guitar playing. Jefferson Street also runs along the northern edge of Fisk University, where I'm standing now. Fisk is the oldest university in Nashville and the home of the famous Fisk Jubilee Singers. The Jubilee Singers are an a cappella group that began touring in 1871 in order to raise funds for the school. In fact, the building behind me, Jubilee Hall, was built with funds from those very first tours. The singers were one of the first groups to introduce the world to spirituals and continued to preserve this unique American genre. The singers are going strong today 
and continue to travel worldwide. Behind me is the impressive new Fisher Center for the Performing Arts, part of the Belmont University School of Music, just south of downtown. Belmont is distinctive in that it was one of the first schools to offer degrees in commercial music in addition to the traditional classical music degrees. A degree in commercial viola includes classical viola lessons, fiddle lessons, jazz lessons including improv class, and rock viola. And I would be remiss in not mentioning that the fabulous classical viola teacher is my wife, Sarah Cote. Well, we gradually have wound our way through Nashville, and our final stop is at the Vanderbilt University Blair School of Music. The Blair School provides a performance-oriented undergraduate program similar to what you'll find at a conservatory and within a great liberal arts research university. Blair offers bachelor's degrees in viola performance and musical arts, as well as integrated studies and teacher education. The terrific viola professors here are Catherine Plummer and Christina McGann. I teach the weekly viola orchestral repertoire class and love working with the excellent students, the viola teachers, and the entire string faculty. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this tour, and my colleagues and I from the Nashville Symphony Viola section look forward to seeing you in Nashville.